All right, everyone, today we'll be starting our Chapter 17 lecture. Um, let's go ahead and dive right on in here. All right, so the introduction, diagnostic uh, electrocardiograph involves an EKG done to rule out diseases. Um, as mentioned in other chapters, some things are not detectable on EKGs, so we run these tests. Uh, these tests are ways that we can diagnose these things. Okay, they can involve a resting test, signal average EKG, um, stress test, ambulatory monitoring. Huh? Um, the signal signal average EKG takes up to about 20 minutes. Machines collect about 250 um, consecutive consecutive. QRS is then analyze them, all right, um, and gives you an average of what, of what, um, of what you got going on. Kind of think about when uh, we learned about the mean, median, and, and rate when we were in grade school. That's what we're looking at. So we just, just take all this data, go and throw it into a machine, and we'll get give you an average about what your your QRS complexes look like. Um, so, yeah, um, artifacts and noises clear a true cardiac signal strength um, on the EKG when when they're doing an EKG um, you actually can pick up like different sounds and things of that nature that's why it's important to um, like women for to not have the underwire in their bra you can't have on um, any jewelry that's why your cell phones can't be um, in the area with you because the machine can't pick up all of this stuff Huh? Um, the signal average EKG recording is a signal average, very average, very large QRS complex. Late potentials they typically show up at the end of the QRS complex. And variations arising from damage or scarred mitocardial tissue. Um, they can predict risk of potential damage, dangerous, dangerous ventricular arrhythmias. I apologize for that. Okay, um, see here in figure 17.1, you see the late potential down here at the bottom, um, it's being, as it's being indicated. And just to give you an idea of like what's here, uh, what's going on here, I want you to think back to um, the previous, uh, earlier chapter when we were talking about the premature beats. Um, that's exactly what it is here with the late potential. It's like they have all the potential to be great, but they don't necessarily have the, the resources to help them facilitate and achieve their full potential okay all right stress testing uh, diagnostic procedure to determine the likelihood of coronary artery disease CAD all right um, the goal is to increase the heart rate with physical exertion thus stressing the heart by increasing the oxygen demand um, the patient symptoms and EKG give vital information regarding um, patency openness of the coronary artery. Um, in the book, they also talk about the pharmacological um, pharmacological test, which simply just means that medicine can be administered to um, gain the to attempt to gain the same effects on the heart. Um, you can tell. Um, same, same effect can be done by using drugs. Um, when they also talk about ischemia and infarctions. So if you can tell me what an ischemia and infarction are, I want you to leave me a comment under this video. Um, so that's that. Moving on. So we are, here's typically what a treadmill stress test looks like. You see they have the, the whole tomography there on their hip. Uh, we're measuring their blood, their blood pressure. Um, you see the EKG leads placed on the back. Um, and if you look right there close up under the arms, you can see that the, that the leads are on the heart, just like it would be for a regular EKG. Um, all right, stress testing continue. Indications for stress testing. Um, suspicious symptoms post CABG or post um, angioplasty elevation 
diagnosis of treatment and exercise include arrhythmias, follow-up to cardiac rehab, family history of heart disease. Um, so if you know that you have a history of heart disease in your family, um, heart attack, stroke, uh, congested heart failure, whatever the case may be, um, around age 40, you should start considering getting a stress test done just so you'll be able to gauge what, um, what you can look for in the future. Um, that, that'll that save you a, that'll save you a whole lot of, of stress. Um, but you know, of course, you know, I'm always telling you to make sure you drink water, get plenty of sleep, eat your fruits and vegetables. Um, take care of yourself now. Even if this is a problem in your family, it doesn't necessarily mean there will be an issue with you um, because you control your own destiny. You can change all this stuff by simply just changing your diet. Make sure that you're, you're exercising and things of that nature, keeping your heart strong. Um, and you won't worry about losing. Um, you won't have to worry about your, your, your mitts and things of that nature. And we'll talk about that later on. Oh, crap. So I apologize. Um, skip the skip the slide. We'll touch on that later. Um, so we have we're at the absence of contra contra. Uh, all right, this is what this is what we got. Um, testing those people could have serious or fatal consequences. Um, symptomatic, severe, aortic stenosis, um, dissecting. Same thing, aneurysm, acute pulmonary embolism, acute mitocardias, or pericardias. All right. So an acute MI, as we know, is discussed in, um, I believe it was like chapter 13 or 14 when we talked about this. Um, acute MIs are detected uh, 48 hours. I believe like 48 hours old. The the hardest two week, the hardest two week in can uh, performing performing a stress test can cause can stress the heart eat out even more, causing the infected area of the heart to uh, infected area of the heart to extend. Um, how, can anyone, if you can tell me how and why that's possible, um, drop me a comment under the under this video. All right, so on to the the relative. Uh, some individuals should have a stress test only if the ben if it benefits the benefits outweigh the risk. All right, um, if it's going to help you again, help fast track you on to changing your lifestyle, I recommend that you do it. Um, but if your heart is just too weak and you're not going to be able to to do it, for, if you know that you're not going to be able to um, last 20 minutes on a treadmill while we while someone measures the activity of your heart then I wouldn't recommend that you do it. Um, again, just take the necessary precautions on your end and um, try to reduce your risk of having problems. Um, left main coronary artery, uh, stenosis, your mental and physical issues, making the patient unable to um, exercise adequately. And um, it's, um, just want to further elaborate on like how how your mental plays a part in this. Um, so the man thinketh, so the man is. So if you believe that you're sick and you have a problem, then hey, guess what? You're, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. But if you believe that you don't have a problem and you um, constantly seek to encourage yourself, um, you can get, again, you can get around this. Uncontrolled, uncontrolled tach tachyarrhythmias or bradyarrhythmias, severe hypotension, which means your systolic rate is greater than 200 and your diastolic rate is greater than 110. Second and third degree AV blocks. Um, so if you have trouble with that, please refer back to um, the chapters where we talked about second, and 80, second, um, second degree AV blocks and what we should be looking for um, to help you determine if that is a problem. Like what would you look for on an EKG that would note that you have a second degree AV block? Right. Um, some individuals should have a stress test only if. Wait, let's do this again. No. Some individuals should only have a stress test only if the benefits outweigh the risk. Um, electrolyte abnormalities, moderate um, stenetic heart value, stenetic heart valve disease, um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. 
myopathy, my bad, or other forms of overflow of inst or instructions. Okay, so we have preparation techniques. Uh, the 12 lead EKG machine is the most important part. Uh, electro patches may be taped to skin uh, because, and that's only because we'll be up moving around during this time, and you don't want to run the risk of having them um, come off. And you don't have to worry about that when you're doing, when you're laying in a subpine position, when you're getting a regular EKG done. Um, females should wear a bra. In this case, when we get an A stress test, um, again, because if you on a, you on a treadmill, definitely don't want to have those issues where you know. We don't have control of the situation, all right? So large, no large meals or at least four hours. Uh, no large meals for at least um, for at least four hours prior to the test. Wear comfortable loose clothing and comfortable um, walking shoes. Taking medications if 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 you or the patient um, have been on medication, you will also inquire to make sure that they took their medications prior to having this test done, um, because we want to see, especially if we're taking medicines to help regulate their heart or cholesterol levels or whatever the case may be, we want to make sure that they are in their best performing state um, with the assistance of this medicine to help them be um, be successful and get the proper diagnosis from this test. Um, certain medications may be held. I just touched on that. Um, stress testing, how is it done? Prior to the test, arresting EKG, history and description of symptoms, baseline Vital signs and hyperventilating EKG. And again, you just read all that in the book. Um, resting EKG would be a regular EKG history and description. Again, we want to know your, your your blood cultures and your family history. See what's going on. Baseline vital signs. See, this is basically what your your vital your basic vital signs look like at a, at a, at a resting rate and um, hyperventilating. We're trying to get you get you get the patient excited a little bit just to see. Um, what their vitals look like when they are engaged in activity. Okay, so I was done the exercise test exercise and while um, while continuing EKG running, the blood pressure um, symptoms checked at intervals continues until eighty five percent of the eighty five percent of the target heart rate reached or symptoms developed. Um, target heart rate is is 200, uh, 220 minus the patient's age, um, submaximal test following, and MI 70% of the target rate. So again, this is what they're saying. If the person is, is typically um, typically healthy, trying to get them up to at least like 85% of their target of the target heart rate. Um, if they are recovering from an MI, just want to get them to at least 70%. Um, and again, just want to see gauged, have it gauged to see where they are with their process, all right, and what, um, based on the condition of the, the MI. All right. Um, the exercise test. Radioisotopes such as um, thallium-201 can be injected during the last minute of the exercise to study the myocardial uh, perfusion. I um, believe that was also discussed in chapters 13 or 14. Go back and um, touch on that if you need a refresher. Um, Multigraded um, accusations um, scans can be can be done after the exercise test. All right, so um, the pharmacolo pharmacological stress testing. I kind of mentioned this earlier. Uh, does not involve exercise. Um, so appropriate for individuals with, with physical limitations um, that preclude exercise. Patient is given an um, IV of medication that cause the heart rate to climb. Um, common medications include, um, these are some of the, the, the common medications that I'm going to name them out for you. Okay, exercise protocols, speed and, and incline of a treadmill, as well as the frequency of changes in protocol stages are determined by the protocol. So again, this is just stating that it'll be different for each person. Um, intensity of exercise is measured in metabolic equivalence. It's a mix. All right. So um, here we go. 
Josh, you shared that you had wanted to know more information about um about mix. Uh, I just want you to think of it kind of like um like dealing with a car. Um, the mix your mix all your horse part, your your horsepower, um, and how much power, how much horsepower, how much energy it takes for you to complete something. Okay. Um, this is what this is about how many mitts you burn doing just regular at home activities, see sweeping, playing with your dog. Um, playing with your kids or move, moving furniture. Okay, so we move my uh, three three point three mitts to, to just vacuum. Um, my four mitts to play with the dog. My five mitts to play with the kids. These kids have a lot of you know young kids have a lot of energy and moving furniture because you you know so we're putting our putting our body through some things. We're moving um, heavy objects around. Um, be one one side of the house to the other, maybe one room, um, maybe upstairs, downstairs. And so that we burn, you'll be burning um, more energy doing those things. All right, these are um, what your target, what your target, target horsepower would be for each age range. Okay. And again, this is what the what the the, the test would be would be derived from right so we want to get them up to at least 75 percent 70 or 85 percent of this based off the age all right so the bruce is the most common most com is the most common used for maximum test and treadmill speed and incline increase every three minutes for a total of 21 minutes because we're trying to get that heart, we're trying to get that heart rate up to at least 85 percent. So we want to um, do it. This that's, that's a great way to do it. All right. So again, it's your the Bruce Protocol stages. Uh, so what 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 that'll look like? So we go from being um, on a 10 degree uh, a 10 degrees incline, and you're moving about. 1.7 miles per hour, uh, all the way up until like, towards the end of the test, um, get you moving at about six miles per hour, and with a 20 degree, at a 22 degree incline. Okay, so the modified Bruce initial work um, work less strenuous. Stage changes include and in, is in smaller increments. Okay, so we're not they're not jumping up. You're not, they're not going to ask you to run as fast or the incline is not going to be as steep on the motor, the modified Bruce. All right. The Newton slower moving, um, sub maximal test setting change, um, every two minutes used most often for testing, um, for patients after they have, um, sustained, a, a MI. All right. Um, termination of the test. Stop the test immediately if any of the following occur. You notice ST elevation, um, sustained um, VTEC, moderate to severe chest pains, especially if accompanied by ST depression or elevation. Um, check back to um, chapters 13 and 14 um, for if you want to know why that is again. Um, a drop in blood pressure. That is greater than 10 millimeters, along with the evidence of ischemia such as chest pains or ST segment depression or elevation. Technical problems with treadmill or monitoring. You see the treadmill smoking or something like that. Just stop the test. Don't don't have people in there trying to um, go the distance, and the equipment is faulty. All right, that's not gonna serve you any good because you're not gonna get an accurate reading, and that could possibly potentially harm for them. All right, the answer is stop it. Stop it if the patient requests to stop. Um, patient becomes dizzy, begins to stumble or feels faint, and uh, the patient becomes um, diaphoretic. All right, so um, following EKG changes are the following EKG changes are normal. Shorten PR interval. Okay, so. 
Again, when we looking at a stress test, because you see, if you see a shortened PR interval, it doesn't mean that hey, this person's got something going on with them. That's that's typical when associate when we're doing these tests. Tall P waves, all right. Low voltage QRS complexes, increased heart rate, and shorter RR intervals. All right, some normal signs: um, decreased uh, systematic vascular resistance due to um, For a lot of move, tongue tied. A lot of dictation, increased respiratory rate, sweating, fatigue, muscle cramping in calves or side, increased blood pressure, or J joint depression. All, all these things are are num normal. All right, so this is what your what your J joint looks like. All right. Oh, look, they, one of those issues that we that I talked about is why this is late going up. Um, I don't know what they had going on at the, the company. I pulled it straight from the website. I did make this up, guys. Um, but for the positive stress test, abnormal t an abnormal test um, can be categorized by ST segment depression greater than or equal to 1 to 1.5 millimeters. Um, that doesn't return to the baseline within eight seconds after the J point. Um, horizontal ST, ST segment, um, ST segment depression, down sloping ST segment depression, um, or up sloping. Down sloping, um, down sloping is most, most indicative of, most indicative of, um, CAD. All right, so if you see, any down sloping ST segments on a on the EKG, and you know that they, that person probably have um, probably has a chronic heart disease. All right, so this is an example of what each one will look like: ST segment depression. Um, if it's up sloping, if it's horizontal, or if it's down sloping. Okay, again, but this is the this is the J joint right here. Right here. So this is what we this is what this is what you 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 would look. You want to see what, what that looks like. Where where is that at in regards to the baseline of this of, of a stress test? You know the baseline is wherever the EKG first starts at. Okay. So look, it's right here. Oh kind of messed that one up. This is the baseline. So where the where the J joint falls. In regards to the baseline, all right. All right. So this is a pre-exercising, uh, pre-exercise resting EKG of a person that may have CAD or may be suffering from recovering from a, a MI. All right. See there, uh, the complexes look a, look a little funky. All right. So this is then after the the stress test now at first glance it may seem like there isn't much change here but if you go if you think back to i believe it's chapter 13 where we're talking about the 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 low voltage and what they look like um we know things that could call low voltage the overweight pregnancy um and things of that nature please just refer back to that chapter to um refresh your memory on that and again we also that help bring Probably bring some things full circle with what's going. What we're talking about here, we mentioned low voltage earlier, but uh, just looking at that, you know, with, uh, refresh your memory on what low voltage look like. You will see that the complexes here are administered in the in the form of low voltage. Okay, positive stress testing. All right. <clears throat> Abnormal tests indicated by U-wave inversion or new appearance of, of U-waves indicative of coronary ischemia, ST-segment elevation, indication of considerable um, transmural mitocardial ischemia progressing to, to the injury phase. Okay, um, Again, you refer back to chapter 13, I believe, um, is where we, we talk about all this stuff. Um, stress test should be stopped immediately to prevent permanent tissue damage. 
Okay, so we see here what the inverted U waves would look like. All right, um, reliability of the stress test. Stress, stress test is not infallible. That means it could, it could mess up, all right? But I want y'all to pay real close attention to what we're talking about here because this could throw you off in the future. Um, again, uh, the opening statement was um, how we, why we use the, the stress test because we know that some things can't be picked up on the EKG and so the stress test is no different. Uh, false positive and false negatives. It's the gold standard of diagnosing coronary artery disease in, um, in an angiogram. Sensitivity, percentage of patients with sensitivity is the, pa the percentage of patients with positive stress tests and CAD proven angiograms. Okay. All right. The percentage of patients with negative stress tests and normal uh, coronary arteries proven by angiogram. The term positive refers to the test sensitivity, and negative refers to the, the refers to the specific specificity of the test. All right, categories of the stress test. A true positive test. Both stress test and the angiogram indicate. CAD. All right. A false positive test is where the stress test is positive, but the angiogram is negative. A true negative is when the stress test and the angiogram are both negative for CAD. False negative, the stress test is negative, but angiogram is positive for CAD. Okay. Um, and you would make the determination for all these cases based off what the patient is telling you, their their history, and what you see on the on the EKG. Because remember, you're going to do a resting EKG, so you have a general idea of what their complexes look like. Again, we talked about uh, mentioned the the mean the mean mean and mode um, early on, where we take the we get the uh, average readout of their of their um, what their heart looks like, and this is what the the information that, that we're going to go on. And so they tell you that they suffer from a, from an MI or they having conditions. And so you now we know what to look for. Uh, we'll know we'll be looking for ST, ST segment elevation, um, discrepancies with the J joint. So we, these are things that we're looking for. But when we run the stress test in the angiogram, if those is what we see on the rest of EKG and what we know, what we have on file, doesn't line up. That's how you know what's going on. You know if you have a true positive, a false positive, a true negative, or a false negative. Okay. All right. Um, Bayes' theorem suggested true um, predictive value of any test lies not just in the accuracy of the test itself, but also in the patient's probability of disease as determined prior to the test. Again, this is what I was just saying about how again how we take the rest in EKG. And the, the the patient's history and, and all of that and all that stuff plays a factor in this. Um, do risk assessment do risk assessment prior to stress test to determine the likelihood of a patient if a patient has CAD. Then do the stress test. All right after the stress test, if the stress test is positive, the patient the patient will likely be either um, treated with medication or scheduled for an, an angiogram for further diagnostic evaluation. If the test is negative, there may be no treatment indicated. On the first five strips, assess the EKG and describe the um, describe that the test should continue to be terminated. Uh, don't worry about that because we're going to we'll come back to that later. All right, on the next five, you'll access the EKG, determine if the stress test is positive negative. Same thing, don't worry about it, we'll come back to it. Um, ambulatory EKG device used to rule out um, intermediate uh, uh, arrhythmias or cardiac ischemia that might be missed on a routine EKG. Consist, uh, consist of electrodes and small battery powered um, digital flash monitor. 
memory device. Excuse me. Uh, record rhythms data. Data later analyzed by by the computer device carried in the pack or 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 on strap over shoulder. Done as patient as inpatient or outpatient. So again, what this is is like a, we'll we'll give them the device. They'll take it home and um. If they don't want, if they don't want to do it there, and they would just have to, to wear this um, for the required time frame, and that data again will be collected, put into the computer, and again we'll get the the average rate of what their heart looks like, and we make determination from there. Okay, indication for whole time monitor use, um, sinoscope or near sinoscopic episodes. Um, intermittent chest pains or shortness of breath, uh, suspicion of suspicions of arrhythmias, uh, determination of arrhythmia treatment effectiveness, uh, preparation techniques, patient um, attached to five or more electrodes on the on the truck trunk uh, prevents muscle muscle artifact. We talked about that before. Patients given instruction, no removing electrodes, no bath or shower. Sponge bath is is, is okay because again we, we need consistent and that's because we need consistent data for the uh, the re preferred time frame. Um, you want to get them to just do normal activities. Um, you want to and if they're not active, we want to encourage them to be a little bit more active than what they are. Um, in compliance with their their regular day to day um, routine because we want to make sure that we get, we get enough enough data. Um, from the different from the different activities um, keep a diary of the symptoms how are they feeling throughout this time with the test um, mark time of symptoms by pressing the marker button on the device all right and this is what um, the man with the whole time monitor um, this is what that would look like it's where the, the electrodes will be placed on the body to get a reading and you see if you uh, looking at this you will see um, like the the, pl the placement of the lead, you so you get various um, various readings from from you get readings from various angles of the heart. All right, and refer back to chapters three and fourteen, so so you know what to to get an idea of what the lead placement look like. Okay, what is a a positive holter reveals abnormalities that could abnormal at ad, um, ad, <laughs> I'm sorry. Abnormalities that could explain the patient's symptoms might include um, tachycardias, bradycardias, pauses, ST segment elevation, um, or depression. Negative halter has no specific significant arrhythmias or ST changes. All right. Event monitoring for patients whose symptoms are um, sporadic, small device. Small device patient carries um, can be prolonged, can be programmed to record abnormalities in rhythms or ST segments, can be activated by patient whenever symptoms appear. Um, you have two kinds of rhythms or ST segment activated monitor rhythms. So, arrhythmia or ST segment activated monitor rhythms con uh, continuously. Patient activated when the symptom, and it's patient activated when the symptoms occur. Okay, um, can be carried or worn for extended periods of time, useful in detecting rhythms or ST segment changes that even a halter monitor might miss. All right, uh, negative if arith arrhythmias or ST or T changes are not found. So we're talking about the ST segment or the T waves. All right. And we're going to cut it off right there.